Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Now What podcast here at Malibu Pacific Church. Hey, if you haven't listened to this past week's sermon yet, uh, please press pause right now and go listen to that sermon so that this podcast makes a little more sense. But again, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life or to listen to sermons, but I'll tell you what, if you did... Or if you do, this will make a little more sense. But if you still want to stay around for the conversation, by all means. Stick around. Stick You're going to be okay. Everybody. You're, You're going to be all right. We'll, we'll guide you along. There it's going to be great. Hey, everybody. It's me, Joel, and we have... Andy. Yeah. Hey, welcome back for another exciting podcast uh, where we're going to be talking about our new series, More. 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 Is more. i got to be honest. Have you ever seen uh, Star Wars Episode Seven, like the new ones? No. No. Come no. on, Andy. <laughs> no. Okay, well, there's a part uh, where, give it away, there's a bad guy named Kylo Ren. And it's a meme out there, and people use it a lot, and he just says more, but he says it. And he actually, sp- like, spits as he says it. So that's why it's a meme. It's like these little oh, little details. You see it. So every time you see, when you're like, more, I think he just, he goes, more! Like, kind of a deal. And you just see the spit, and people kind of get grossed right. out. Anyways, Star Wars fun stuff that's right great. there. Way to start on a podcast. All right, so we are in session three of our more series, uh, and it's been really awesome. Um, so, if Andy, if uh, there's one thing that people could take away from the entirety of the series, like a one bottom line, what would that be? Yeah, that's good. Well, whatever the more you're seeking is the direction that's going to be leading you. And so, if I want more of something, that's what I think about. That's what I'm emotionally engaged in, mm-hmm. involved in. That's where I'm going. Yeah. So what is your more? Yeah. What is the more, the question we've been asking, that you're looking for? Mm-hmm. And uh, that will determine your decisions. That will determine uh, the direction of your life. It will determine what you value. It will determine where you spend your money, where yep. you spend your time. Yep. Your more determines your purpose. And so mm-hmm. what's the more that you're looking for? Kind of rhymes too. Yeah, yeah, that should be a bumper sticker. There you go. We're selling those on Sunday. Dollar ninety five. <laughs> they go straight to the missions fund. No, That's kidding. right. Right. Well, this weekend though, particularly, yeah. we we said then let's focus in on life. That there's more to life than this life. If you're looking for more in this life, you're going to be disappointed. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you've been throwing up. Not throwing up. Actually. I've been throwing, so throwing up. up Everybody's a been lot. real sick. You've been putting up a slide. There we go. Let's use that better language. Putting up a slide with uh, five different ways of more that people are probably looking for more in their life. Financial, relational, physical, career, spiritual. I want to ask you what everybody's thinking. With your pastor's hat on. Okay, I know it's a calling. A pastor's hat. He literally has a pastor's hat from seminary. He wears it every day in the office, everybody. I'm just just kidding. Uh, Out of those five, uh, we'd probably say you'd say spiritual more. What what would you say out of those five? What people say? No, what what you would want out of like there's more. Financial, relational, physical, career, spiritual. Because then I'm going to ask the flip side. Take Mm -hmm. your pastor's hat off. What would you say and what would you think people would say? Like, so here, two-part question. Yeah. What do you think you would say? As that pastor, I want more of. That you want more of. Yeah. And people coming to church on that Sunday in that hour. And what yeah. do you think people would want in the other 162 hours out of the week? Wow. That's a big one. Right? Um, I'm coming swinging. Okay, man. yeah. No kidding. Go. Let me think. Yeah. What, what would we want? What do I personally want more of? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, I would say... Um, I know, and I'm a professional Christian, and I'm supposed to say this answer, but yeah, more of God, absolutely, more of the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not just saying that. I, I know everybody's laughing right now. <laughs> of course, as we're supposed to say that. You're that. paid to say that, and and uh, give us, you know, study school answer. Jesus, Jesus, is Jesus. that the answer? Yeah. Uh, but but truly, I can say that the things I pursued earlier on really are not as important. And we talked about it at the end of the sermon. Mm-hmm empty nesters and that was easy for me to talk about because mm. that's me and I really do want to see more of God and experience more and I've been letting go of what I thought was important yeah. a car a house a, you know clothes or I don't know some status um, yeah economics and so forth so yeah I'd love you know living indoors I love eating Cool. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I like those things. Those are those more. Those are right of doubt. Yeah, uh, those Andy are wonderful those. things. It's not like yeah. I don't. 
But I, I've been thinking about Billy Graham's words uh, at the end of his life. He said, if he could trade all of the, I don't think I'm quoting this correctly. So if you have AI, please uh, send us an email and correct us. But we'll probably be wrong. Just I'm <laughs> summarizing something to the effect that he said he wished he had spent more time with 12 people and invested mm. in them and mentored them. Secondly, he said, I wish I had spent more time praying than traveling and doing all the evangelistic crusades mm. and flying around the world. And that, that was his conclusion. I, I, I'm not Billy Graham, but I'm finding more of that yeah. is true. And I don't know if that happens because you're getting a little older mm -hmm. or I don't know, life stage, when you're in your 20s, you're fighting, you're wanting more, you're trying to build something, you get a lot of scars, you make a lot of mistakes. In your 30s, you have a little more stability, uh, but you're still building things. In your 40s, you realize you have wounds and I need to get counseling. In your 50s, you become a leader of leaders and leader of things. And then in the 60s and 70s, you're a leader of leaders because mm -hmm. now you have that wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I um, still have a lot of scars on my back, but now in my later years, I, I can say as an empty nester, yeah, I mean, uh, really what is lasting? What I thought was important earlier and wanted more of, really, I really, I resonate a little bit with Solomon. I, um, the things that are eternal are actually more important. Yeah. Well, the reason why I asked that question is because during the time when you're asking people what they want more of, and this isn't a uh, call out or a shame by any means. There was somebody who did yell out, more Jesus. And I could almost feel around there, like people sitting around that person uh, who, who, was really being, who was being completely sincere. And I totally yeah. felt the sincerity. He was like, yeah. yes, more Jesus. Other people were like, yeah, duh. Or like, of course, that's it. we're in church. You're supposed to say that. Like yeah. almost with the eye, eye roll. And I felt it right there. I was standing right over there. That's right. And um, it was just, it was interesting to me that even though we're here for, for more of that, that we might even like, I don't know, not tear each other down, but almost question it or go, oh, duh. But what's what, what, what's he real? What are you really seeking in life? Like we're all supposed to say that. It's like no, we're not supposed to say that. We're so we get to say that. We yeah. we want to say that. We want more of Jesus. So I wonder where that like kind of like, I don't know the that critical heart maybe comes in a little bit because I felt it for just a second of like myself of I even I gotta be honest yeah. I put myself in there going duh you know but it's yeah. I was like no this person really means it I was yeah. thinking at that point we have a lot of people in the room who don't know Jesus and they don't know that that is the answer help us just lead them to that amen and I was getting there I mean Solomon is getting there with uh, Ecclesiastes 12 at the end the last two verses, you mm -hmm. know, look for God, seek God first and obey his commands. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, it, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a good, it, it is the right answer. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes if you feel that tension, I know in the room, I always assume half the audience don't know that that is the answer. And what mm -hmm. does that mean? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and so I was like, huh? I, I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I don't know what's happening in that moment. Half of it is, yeah, duh. And yeah. The other half is who? Who? Yeah. What are you? Why would? Why would you scream that out? I, I want to understand that. Right. Yeah. I, I, I walked in here because I'm getting ready to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of guys I talked to is like, man, I'm on my last leg. I'm in recovery in one of the recovery houses, and. And I, I just need, you know, a higher power. I don't know the name. And yeah. so, but maybe screaming it out is giving us the name. That is the answer. But it's an interesting dynamic that we have here. When you create a church front church people, you have everybody in the room and you're going to get a different reaction. Totally. Absolutely. Well, the first part of the question was with your pastor hat on. The second one was that, that you always have a pastor hat. So I don't know if I can even ask this question, but I'll, you know, I'm going to speak for myself. I think number one for me, when you ask the, when those five things are up there, of course, spiritual, like I think that, you know, seek God and all the things, everything will come to fruition. Like everything's going to work out. Like love God, love others. Um, God and family. Like there, there's so many different quotes in scriptures, so many different bumper stickers, so many different sermons that can only lay those out that if you know you're walking with the Lord, everything else is going to work out. But that's for me, I, I always tend to think, well, I always have these struggles as a human in my own skin. And what's the thing out of these lists, uh, out of these five of the lists that can probably fix all those things? And the first one is financial. And I immediately go to the financial part because 
Jesus talked about money way more than anything else. Any other right? subject. Well, way I think every than, one of those yeah. topics is a spiritual conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they definitely are a spiritual conversation, yeah. for sure. I think with the financial piece, though, I think that if we were outside as non-believers, not in a church setting, and you put these five things in front of a non-believer on any given day, what do you want more of in your life? And they started at kind of like midline, like they weren't already a billionaire, right? You're just kind of like average on all these types of things, average in financial, average in relational, average in physical, career, spiritual. Uh, and they were average age, all those kind of, whatever, you know, like the baseline. I would think, and I was thinking about this last night, that people would probably lean into the financial thing nine times out of 10. I think so too. Right? Because I think that money can buy relationships, even though they're not great relationships. Money can buy physical appearance. Well, I mean, Maslow's hierarchy yeah. of needs, uh -huh. I mean, living indoors and eating and having mm -hmm. economics, that is your base. I mean, survival. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, we need to look it up really quick, but what's the second or third? I mean, relationships and mm -hmm. security and so forth and yeah. self-esteem. So that goes up the hierarchy. But the very first one is just physical needs, which money, economics, you know, that, that gives... It is a human need. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, but isn't there more to life than what we're eating and what we're wearing? Mm -hmm. Isn't there more? So, yeah, it's important, but there's more. So I think he's alluding to, yeah. hey, anyway, Maslow is just giving us a hierarchy of some of the human needs that we have and health that we need. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's one of the toughest nuts to crack, especially in the in Malibu, the surrounding cities, because there's a lot of finance here. There's a lot of wealth. And oh, granted, yeah. not everybody has that, but I, w I would say a big majority does. Um, and a lot of people ask, well, if I have all these things, then why do I need more, even though they're searching for that more constantly? Um, there's this famous comedian out there um, that talks about, you know, it's like people say money can't buy happiness. Money can't, you know, fix all the things. And he said... I disagree. Have you ever seen anybody frown on a jet ski? And it made me laugh really hard. He's like trying to do a little ring and like frowning like on a jet ski. He's like, no, money can buy certain types of happiness, but once you're off your jet ski, then what? Like, right. what's the more? Yeah. You only have so many, you have 70 to 90 years of jet skiing, and then what? Yeah. You have an eternity after that, right? That's right. So I think yeah. the point Solomon and Jesus are both saying, don't make that the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Those are important, mm -hmm. but don't let it control your heart. So that's why I think Jesus talked more about money than any other subject because nothing is connected to our hearts more than our money. Yeah. So what we give to, what we invest in, a piece of our heart goes towards it. I, I care about that. So what we spend money on is really what we're giving our hearts to and what God wants is our hearts. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you're giving your money to or what you know, you're pursuing yeah. because your heart is going to follow. Yeah. And Solomon and also Jesus, there's more. There's eternity written in your hearts. Yeah. It, it's not once I achieve these things or get these things, then you're going to be, um, you know, satisfied and happy and joyful. Nope. Mm -hmm. Necessary is good, but tools to be used to lead us to God and pursue God, Not those are not end-alls. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going into the financial thing only because you showed a video, Jeff Bezos. Right, the rice. that was great. That was from you. No, I, that was your idea. TikTok, someone else did it. Someone, I just saw They did, it. but you helped with but the it, illustration. It, it, well, it blew my mind when I watched it the very first time. There's a whole three-minute video on it. If you only We only saw the 25-second version of it, of like the, the initial, or like what he's at right now. But it showed the initial, the person counting out rice grains for like the entire weekend to make sure it was like right on the money. Anywho... Uh, but when you saw that video for the first time and all of a sudden you saw how many pounds of rice, especially with each rice, like piece of grain of rice is worth a hundred thousand dollars. thousand. And he sets aside, here's 10 Tesla SUVs and it's, you know, and here's your multi-million dollar home. What did, how, what did that make you feel like when you were watching that for the first time? It's, a, uh, it's unimaginable to yeah. have that kind of wealth. Yeah. I, I can't even... I can't even fathom. I can't even put myself in those shoes. Totally. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have more of that. Yeah. yeah. How would you tip if you but, Yeah. 
everybody wants something from you because totally. you have so much. Absolutely. And then you have to live in a different world of really you're protecting yourself and isolating yourself because mm-hmm. everybody knows who you are and everybody wants something from you. Absolutely. Uh, but it's hard to imagine that the point also is that Solomon had about 20 times what Jeff Bezos has. 2.1 trillion. trillion yeah, yeah, without other income that also was added to it. So, yeah. I mean, the person who said vanity, vanity, meaningless, meaningless, it's all a vapor, smoke, is the, was the wealthiest person probably who's ever lived on this earth. And that was his conclusion to that. Yeah. I'm not sure I would have come up with that. <laughs> that was pretty good. I would have said jet ski, jet ski. Jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, even then, I mean, we can just take his word for it that it's still meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. I'm going to leave all this behind. Yeah. And Jeroboam, correct me if I'm wrong there, the next king, his son, messed the whole kingdom up, split the kingdom between north and south. His son didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Messed it up. Yeah. So, be careful of your lineage. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But with all of the wealth, it's still, yeah. as soon as Solomon is gone, yeah. everything was gone. Totally. Do you think that, and I, I don't know this to be a fact, but do you think Solomon lived in isolation? Do you think that oh. he, that was one of the reasons why he went crazy or had issues or why he had so many wives or. I was thinking about this actually yesterday when you were right. you made the joke of he had was it seven hundred wives and seven hundred mother in laws. Don't worry, right. I like mine, and she's sitting right there in the front row. And I say it by the way. Just kidding. I know you like your mother in law. I really like mother in law too. I do too. I really do. Um, but I'm just I'm wondering because he had so much, or the wisdom that he had, or people were always after something. Do you think he lived a, a, in isolation? Do you think that he suffered oh. with relationships? I don't know about that. Yeah, I, know, I don't know. I mean, I know scripture, either, he experimented with every yeah. sort of pleasure there is. Yeah. The reason for all the wives, it's a joke in the mm-hmm. Christian world. It's used over and over again. But um, it, it's to create peace with other nations. Mm-hmm. So he's bringing in other daughters. You marry another nation to say we're at peace. We're good. So we'll send you our daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the peace treaty is to send somebody from that tribe to yeah. bring about peace. And so, but God specifically said, do not bring other religions into, um, basically, basically uh, Israel's a remnant and God's preparing the people mm-hmm. to prepare to bring Jesus into this world. You are a remnant. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, making you holy or different, these people, the Jews, mm-hmm. in preparation to show the rest of the world that Yahweh, this one God, not the many gods, yeah. is real. Um, so he broke... As wise as he was, he broke the commands. And maybe he said that at the end, Ecclesiastes 12. Mm-hmm. Keep God's commands. I must stop. I'm, I'm, those are my words. Mm-hmm. But, man, I didn't listen. Yeah, I didn't even follow my own instruction in the entire book of Proverbs. Mm. And I'm paying the consequences here. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't about even all those wives. That was the ancient world of how to have a contract. But it was what they brought with them. Yeah. And it, uh, in a sense, the other religions, they influenced Israel. Yeah. Wow. So at the end, he's saying, you know, trust God, follow God, and keep his commands. Yeah. <laughs> if he lived in isolation, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem, I mean, you're in a palace and think. you're always around people. But, yeah. I, you know, I, I just... Again, it's movies, it's TV show, you know, like that yeah, kind of stuff where like the princess or the prince is in the tower by themselves. They're, right. they can't see the people, you know, you, Jasmine from Aladdin cannot talk to any comments, you know, it, granted they're all fake, but I'm, I'm just wondering if there's like a hint right. of that, you know, where like you're around so much, but does anybody really know who Solomon is? That's a great question. I, I don't know. Yeah. We can search, research that. Yeah. That's a great either, question. But yeah, I don't know. Well, okay. Well, here's another question, but I don't know if you necessarily will have an answer to it. But in Ecclesiastes one nine, when you're going over one nine, and there's nothing new under the sun, yeah, I, pe- I feel like, and I've used it before too in my like emo days of Christianity. The meaningless, meaningless happens. Why should I try anything new? There's nothing new under the sun. 
Am I really surprising God with who I am or what I'm doing? What, what, how should we take that piece of scripture? Because I've seen it be weaponized for bad, and I've also oh, seen it good. be used for good. Yeah. Like, why are you even trying that? Why try anything? Why try that? There's God, nothing new. God already knows. Hey, and it's all, meaningless. it's all meaningless. Why, why try why anything? Even, why even try something? Yeah. Or yeah. God already knows. So guess what? You're. It's going to work out. It's fine. You know. So what? What are those? Like what? 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 What way should we be leaning in? You're absolutely right, and that is the whole point of Ecclesiastes, mm-hmm. that if, um, if we're just looking for life under the sun, it is meaningless. That's his point. Ah. But the moment we understand that eternity is written in our hearts and we're to live for something bigger and beyond ourselves and live for eternity, yeah. things start to make sense. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and, and God has things in nature and in life that constantly are pointing us back to him. Mm-hmm. There is justice. Mm -hmm. It is random, and it's not in control. If you do all the right things, life can still go bad. Mm -hmm. It is random. It doesn't make sense why some good people get punished and bad people are seen to be rewarded. It just doesn't make sense. You're absolutely right. But there is justice built Mm -hmm. in, and God's created things that will point us to him and help us realize at some point, that's what I kept saying a couple of times, when you're looking over the ocean in Malibu and you have everything, there's got to be more, right? That's eternity written in your heart. That's on our website also. Yeah. So we just know that there's a hunger or more there yep. that's in our hearts. And so he's warning us, be careful what you're living for. Mm-hmm. And that's the point of the whole thing. Yeah. What is the more that you're living for? Totally. Live for eternal things, things that will last. Yes. Solomon is pointing to the things that Jesus is pointing to as well. Mm-hmm. So don't lay up your treasures here on this earth. Mm-hmm. But the things, the investments we make in God's kingdom are for eternity, yep. and that will never rust. That will never go away. Yeah. So what are you living for? Um, That's a great question. Yeah. yeah well, but you're right. If it's under the sun in this life and all I see is this life, mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah. It is meaningless. You're, it's depressing, yeah. actually. Mm. But that's why we need the church. We're pointing people to eternity. You have a purpose. There is something bigger for us to live for, totally. and we live for eternity. Our time on this earth, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years on this earth, <coughs> it goes by in a blink of an eye. goes by in a blink of an eye, and generations will come and generations will go. But the things that are last that will are eternal things. Yeah. It's funny that you say that. I mean, it, it goes by in a blink of an eye. I saw this meme the other day that said if Back to the Future was made today, you know, Marty would yeah. fly, yeah. go back to 1994. Oh, that's just the old days. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's 30 years ago. 30. And when the movie came out in 85, it was yeah. 55. Yeah. So when we watched that, it's like, that was Whoa. so long ago. Nope. Marty McFly would travel back to 1994. 94. So everybody... Keep living for That's not right. just today, but live for that eternity too. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, live for that eternity. That's right. That's yeah. the whole point. That's the more that will satisfy. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one last thing: Did it feel good throwing sand on people uh, on Sunday? Did it... <laughs> That <laughs> just came to me. I don't know. I hope, I hope our uh, guy who cleans our church can clean that out. I Absolutely. don't know. But yeah, Jose was kind of mad. No, I'm just kidding. He was really mad. <laughs> no, he's the he's uh, one of the best people in the history of forever. It is so. true. You know what? Dust in the wind. It's, it's meaningless. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. With that said, uh, please hit that subscribe button or share this podcast with anybody who you need to share it with. And also, please point them back to the Malibu Pacific uh, dot church website. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hand gestures, please send them to me at joel at Malibu Pacific dot church, and uh, we'll get this podcast to them. With that said, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. And we'll see you on Sunday at That's ten right. o'clock online or on site. Take care. Take care. Take care.